Okay, everybody, we're going to do a B12 shot today. So a B12 is technically an intramuscular so shot. Those of you who are having to do your own testosterone shots, this can be applied to you. Intramuscular shots are very common. Subcutaneous shots are also very common, but with B12 and testosterone, they have to be in the muscle. A lot of people get white knuckled first, but if you do, just watch the video. You really can't screw this up. I mean, there are some blood vessels and some nerves, but if you just stick to the right area, whether it's the shoulder or down here in the thigh, outer thigh, you will be okay with that muscle. The thigh, I think, is an easier access and it's a bigger muscle, so you really can't screw up. The shoulder is technically the most approachable in a clinic because you just have to roll up your sleeve versus take off the pants or roll up the pants. Those of you who do subcutaneous shots for testosterone, I think that gives you more variety because you can actually do it in your belly. And and what I did was I cleaned up the skin first and we already did this. I, I, you don't have to mark up the skin. So the first objective is to clean the area that you're going to inject. Do not touch it after you wipe it. I will take the same uh, alcohol swab and after confirming that this is B12, it's also known as cyanocobalamin, 1000 micrograms per ml. And this is typically found in the, this is paid for by insurance. Was this paid for by insurance? Yes, it was. And Mrs. D is now one of my warriors that we've 90% kicked asthma in the ass. Yes. Got 10% more, we're almost so, there. So this is an interesting thing. Mrs. D has cats and uh, uh cats unfortunately they're they're great animals i was allergic to them the, the, well i think a lot of people are allergic to cats yes the dander of the cat is uh highly allergenic or irritating and if you're an asthmatic and you become irritated even if you're not allergic if you're irritated by dust or tar smoke or anything that's burned from a plant it will trigger the asthma i can't ask my pet owners to get rid of their pets pet therapy is actually that's not fair no it's not fair uh, but if we're suffering and we're taking a lot of steroids, uh, that's too much because too many steroid hits, although it saves the asthma, will eventually put you into osteoporosis. Allergy shots desensitize the body to say, stop that asthma. We're not really allergic to this thing, whether it's soy, pet dander, tree pollen, or grass. But there's no guarantee as far as how long it takes to desensitize from the immunotherapy of uh, shots. Taking the offending agent away, like moving to Florida or Arizona or taking the pet away for a month might give you a, a calming effect to the asthma. We were able to succeed just by doing some blood tests, looking for deficiencies, fixing the deficiencies. Blood work, a lot of blood work, fixing the deficiencies, making sure that the deficiencies were addressed. Addressed, right. right. And that's all it took? That, that's all it took. We only have 10% more to go, but well, I'll I tell guess, you what, yeah. here's the next challenge. And, and, and this is for you guys too. If we work on weight, I think working on weight, and, and that will always uh, eliminate some food products. I bet you there's also a couple of food products that are, have been stacked on top of the cats that are triggering. So now that we have calmed down the immune system, if we can fine tune the food products, maybe increase the exercise. We have a very well-versed yoga teacher here. Uh, but if we can also throw in some other options, especially for breath work, I bet you will be 99.9%. We will track that. We're gonna track that. Make a video. <laughs> yeah, right. <Sure. laughs> okay, back to our shot. Picture so of the 3ML syringe. This is more than enough. And you notice I did not touch the top because I already wiped it down. This contains one ML. This is a 3ML syringe. So easily you'll be able to fit everything here into, right? It'll fill up into the ML. I'll show you in a second. And this is something called a 25 gauge needle, which is very small but because it's small it won't hurt as much and because it's small though it will take some time to suck all this stuff into the oh. syringe i put gloves on because i think it's a proper technique i cleaned off mrs d first then i cleaned off the vial i haven't touched the vial or mrs d so now i'm going to open this up in a sterile fashion this is our 3 ml syringe uh, with 25 gauge needle and you usually have to break it break the seal a little bit first and the other thing that we're taught with uh, syringes and needles is never recap. Because when you recap, one hand has to hold the cap, the other hand has to put the needle back in the cap and you have a chance of poking yourself. So you're better off if you have a, a needle box just dropping it in the box and not even worrying about recapping. I'm going to take this in a sterile fashion. The needle will get into the rubber part, that circular part that has been cleaned. We'll put it in this way so I can see it. it goes in. Then you have to turn it upside down 
and it's nice because B12 is red and you can see the red coming out. Sometimes you have to adjust the needles. Okay, we've got, you have everything out of the vial in the syringe. So some people will take this amount, put the needle in and then force the air into the vial. Yeah. So there's positive pressure. So it, just, so it automatically sucks it. But the problem is if you put too much in, it explodes oh. and it leaks around so either the hole. Yeah. So I usually just be, I'm just patient. You can see that there's air in there. So what you have to do is tap down the fluid to the bottom, get any out of the lure lock syringe, and you slowly, you're gonna lose a little bit, but you slowly get the air out by pushing the plunger up just till you see the B12 enter right before the needle, there. Since you're not gonna be injecting into a blood vessel, you don't have to worry about an air embolism. There have been stories on ER emergency room where you have an IV and there's an air bubble in there and the air bubble can cause an embolism. In theory, it can, usually doesn't happen. Um, and this too, it's better to do it without the air. So, but you're not gonna, if you have a tiny bit of air in there, you're not gonna cause any damage to the patient. Now that you have everything in there, the needle is still sterile, don't touch the needle. I've put down the vial, air is still clean. Um, put the needle in a perpendicular fashion, 90 degrees off of the arm where you're gonna inject. And this area, the nerves and the blood vessels are backwards or in the back, so you're safe. All you have to do, the slow deep breaths, okay? Is you make sure that you enter into the muscle. All right. You aspirate a little bit, just to make sure there's no blood, and you inject the rest slowly. I have seen some overzealous people take the needle you pull the needle out and then you just apply pressure. I'll hold it. I like to distract the skin by moving it a bit. And in theory, I'm just gonna put this needle down here. In theory, you're supposed to do something called a Z-plasty where you pull the skin down, put the needle in, let the skin up and then pull the needle out and that way the traction on the skin when you let go and pull the needle out it stops or tamponades off the bleeding so you shouldn't have any bleeding uh, honestly whether you're doing an uh, intramuscular shot or taking blood out of the vein and i've had this done several times you really have to apply pressure for at least a minute to three minutes especially when you're taking blood out of a vein i don't care how good they are if they're using an 18 gauge needle and they put a, a little bit of pressure on and then give you a band-aid and then say you're good that's you're going to leak through that potentially so how you doing great okay so uh, i i think that the massage is always nice afterward and it also in theory will disperse it a little bit into the muscle the only technical problem would be that if you have somebody that's obese a lot of body fat over the muscle you're gonna have to go through the fat to get to the muscle and as I was mentioning, I've seen some overzealous people go deep into the arm, almost into the bone, and that hurts. And they're gonna kill anybody, but that does hurt. So uh, just know the size of the needle, the size of the arm. Uh, and if you are totally unsure, go for the thigh. There's a lot more muscle to have a level of air that you can play around with as far as going too deep or too shallow. And you can it anywhere here. Well, it doesn't matter where you... Let's talk about that. I'm going to take away the ink okay, now. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Let me see you go arms overhead. Arms overhead. Any pain? No pain. Arms up like this? Yes. Any pain? No. Okay. So now we have to dispose of the needle properly. Uh, you shouldn't be leaving it around. I take this into my sharps box. And that's pretty much a B12 shot. It's technically also a testosterone shot. I would rather have people do the thigh, so you can do the outer thigh. If you take an imaginary line that goes between the kneecap and your hip up here, and you take one hand breath here, one hand breath here, this is your destiny. This is the destiny, this is the vastus lateralis here. And there's a lot of muscle. This is probably the biggest muscle aside from the latissimus dorsi. So if you clean out the area, same spot, uh, about four centimeters. I think it is a good idea when you're first doing this to, to mark, it. mark it because a lot of people will start setting up their shot 
and then you kind of go back and say, where did I clean that up? Yeah. So it, until you get used to that, it's probably a good idea to use erasable ink, uh, just to make sure that you go when you go back, especially if this is the first time where you're asking an assistant to do it who's never injected before. It's kind of nerve wracking if you've never done it before, but it's easier to remember when you go back where you cleaned. That way you don't, and you had asked, asked earlier, even if you take a shower, is it good enough? Uh, technically, you really have to use alcohol first. I think, oh, okay. Yeah, soap and water is certainly good. If you, worst case scenario, soap and water, fine. But soap and water carries with it some detergents and some perfumes. So when you inject the needle through that, you might be there. taking some stuff okay. through it. Alcohol, yeah. it'll it's... evaporate. Yeah. So all you're doing with alcohol is killing some superficial bacteria that might be left over from soap and water that you of your bath earlier. And even if it looks clean, bacteria you can't see. There have been some. MRSA cases, not that often, uh, but MRSA cases that blossom when you don't clean off before giving yourself a shot. So that's pretty much it. If you have somebody that you're giving allergy shots to though, this is a little bit different. Testosterone B12, piece of cake. I guess the first time you get the shot, if you do it on your own, just sit there for about 15 minutes, just like the COVID shot. You sit there for 15 minutes to 30 minutes just to make sure everything's cool. But after you do that, you can go and exercise if you wanted to. Okay. My suggestion is you switch spots. So you have the lateral axillary, you've got the lateral thigh, you also have the buttocks. Uh, that, so the stomach is more, it, it's hard to get that uh, rectus abdominis muscle. And there's a lot of fat in a lot of people. So you'd have to get through the fat and then get to the muscle. But the problem is the muscle in some people is super thin. Yeah, so you might oh, yeah. actually go through the muscle and into the belly. Okay. So I, I would say the, the thicker the muscle, so think of a very thin slice of steak. Uh, uh, I forgot yeah. the name of that steak that you put on a sandwich, but think of that and try to just stop the needle right in the middle. Oh, God. Versus okay. like a fat filet mignon where you can put the needle in, you'll always be in the filet. So hopefully this gives you a couple of ideas. If you have any questions, put them down below. Otherwise, take your B12 shot, your testosterone shot, and uh, I'll do the next video on subcutaneous shots.